In this video, we're gonna talk about drafting outreach emails for your link building outreach campaign. Uh, if you've checked out the other videos, you've seen that we've already talked about everything from crafting the perfect blog post to uh, different types of link building outreach, including the kind of mechanics of everything from the skyscraper technique to uh, link roundups, uh, mention outreach, and related blog post outreach. But now I wanna spend some time specifically on drafting outreach emails. I've, I've shown you some examples of our templates, uh, but I wanna talk more in depth about outreach emails, including everything from subject lines to the email contents themselves to email follow-up and cadence for these emails that you're going to be sending. The emails are really make or break for your link building outreach. You can have the most amazing blog post in the world, but if you don't have the right subject line, then your email won't get opened. And if you don't have the right body text in your email that appeals to the recipient, then it's not going to get read and they won't check out your link to your content and they won't end up linking to that. So your email has to be on point. Otherwise, all your time and efforts are wasted. Now, to save you some time, we drafted some email templates for you that you can work off of, and these can be your starting point. Just check out postaga.com slash DL, and you can get those templates. And you also have some more resources at your disposal, uh, including uh, a spreadsheet template for monitoring and tracking your email outreach. So now let's talk about subject lines. Your subject line determines whether the recipient of your email actually opens your email. Now, what can get that email opened? What can you do to get someone who has never heard from you before to open your completely unsolicited email and then read your content and hear what you have to say. There are a few primary motivators that I've seen that I've had success with. Uh, the first one is urgency. You know, think of like an expiring deal, act now. The urgency of having to do something or missing out potentially on an opportunity and the fear of missing out is a powerful motivator. Uh, with outreach though, it can be tricky because well, what's the urgent need for them to act? Uh, and we'll talk about a few examples of subject lines to give you some ideas to play off of. The other one uh, is curiosity. And this one I use fairly often and I've had success with this, you know, giving them curiosity of, you know, what's inside the email? What opportunity lies inside? You know, something that makes me want to take a peek at that email and just check out what they have to say. And some types of Curiosity emails, just think of any email where the subject line ends in a question mark or a hint at the contents, but not saying it outright, like an email that ends in, you know, dot, dot, dot. Um, another type of email subject line that I've seen works well is something uh, personalized, like actually personalized that makes me want to see what's inside because it appears as if this email was crafted just for me. Someone spent time and effort to create something appealing to me. One uh, thing that I saw someone did with their newsletter that got me every time, and this was a mass email that they send out to hundreds or thousands of people. It was a construction industry news blog that had the subject line that was Andrew's construction news. You know, Now, I had no interest at all in construction industry news. I'm not really sure how I got on that email list, but my name was in the subject line. And so I wanted to see what was inside. What was this construction news crafted just for me? Um, and it worked on me more than once. I am uh, reluctant to admit. Um, <laughs> but here are kind of now some suggestions that I want to give you for coming up with some email subject lines. So like uh, the first one, uh, for your next roundup post, question mark. This shows kind of curiosity, uh, you know, using that curiosity technique. Um, it's intriguing. I uh, hint at something related to what they're familiar with, you know, roundup posts. They do roundup posts. And I'm hinting that 
inside this email is something that might be interesting to them. And for link roundup outreach in particular, this is perfectly fine. I found this works very well. You know, as we've mentioned before in our video on link roundups, which if you haven't seen yet, please check that out. Uh, the people that you're reaching out to will want good content, so you're doing them a huge favor. Uh, that's not going to be the case necessarily with other types of outreach where they're not expecting or hoping for you to reach out to them. So for those, we have to get more creative. So uh, this next subject line is kind of uh, geared towards that, you know, your article on whatever topic. Um, familiarity helps for this. I've seen so many outreach emails that seem just automated that have subject lines like website.com where it seems like they just threw in my top level domain but don't really know anything about my company or anything like that. And those I'll usually just send to spam right away without even opening them because it's clearly not a human effort and nothing personalized went into this and chances are the people who sent that email don't really know about me or my blog um, and I'm going to be skeptical that their content is actually relevant to my audience or helpful at all for me. Uh, over the years, I've gotten tons of unsolicited outreach emails for the blogs that I've managed and ran and so I have a lot of experience on the receiving end of a lot of these. So that comes into play with a lot of the subject lines that I'm crafting as well. Uh, the next one, collaboration, question mark. I, I, I really like these uh, kind of you know, subject lines that end in a question mark because it's kind of trying to create a conversation with someone who you've never spoken with before. And a lot of the time, this can kind of be intriguing. This one in particular is a bit more of a gamble. It presents a question, an opportunity, and there's curiosity here. But your email content, the email inside that subject line has to be relevant. Um, so inside your email, you'll have to be asking somehow to collaborate or something, whether it's a guest post or whatnot. Because if the email content is not relevant, then guess what? The recipient is never going to trust you again, and they're never going to open up any more of your emails. So you had a shot, and you blew it. Another one that has worked on me a lot, this subject line, is can I ask a favor? This one kind of piques curiosity, because I'm wondering, well, what what... What are they going to be asking for? You know, and people I've found generally want to be helpful to other people. And, you know, this is also one of those situations where it's a bet that may work once, but it won't work multiple times with the same recipient. If you're trying to start a new conversation with someone that you've reached out to before, you can't try this again because you can't, you can't be like, hey, can I ask a favor? Hey, can I ask a favor? No, that, that is not going to work. Uh, now, kind of with all these kind of ideas, when you're crafting subject lines, get creative, try out different things, and be tracking these subject lines in your spreadsheets as well so you can see what your open rates are and what kind of what your response rates are to given subject lines and see how those are performing. Now I want to turn our attention towards the actual email body text itself. And I want to do a sample. Uh, uh, this is specifically for a roundup email. Now you can, as I mentioned before, you can check out all of our email templates. They're all free for you to download at postaga.com slash DL. And this one is a sample email from a roundup email. And I want to break this one down. So first I have, hey, insert name. Uh, I'm going to say their name here. And I only want to say their first name because I want to make it more familiar. And I want them to realize that I know who they are specifically and not just reaching out to the website overall. Um, you're going to find this information using ideally hunter.io as we've mentioned in other videos. Um, but you should know the first name of the person you're reaching out to. It makes it more likely that they'll read the rest of the email because the email will look more personalized than just generally speaking, reaching out to this blog saying, hey, I thought you'd find this interesting. In this next paragraph, I'm showing that I know what their website and their content is all about. I'm not wasting any time and I'm not wasting their time. Uh, if you 
have run a blog long enough, you've gotten a ton of unsolicited outreach emails from people asking you to include their link in your content. And often the content that you're getting is irrelevant to what you have or it's low quality. But by starting out where I am showing that I know what their content is about, it's demonstrating higher value that you know what their stuff is about. This way, when we get to the ask of having your content included, it makes them more likely to think, okay, this content must be relevant to my roundup posts because uh, they know what my content is about and they wouldn't waste my time by researching my blog and then finding an irrelevant blog and then reach out to them saying, hey, you should include ours. So that's important, you know, get to the point here, but we also want to be complimentary. I love your articles. Uh, flattery will get you everywhere. They will not necessarily remember everything you said in your email, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And if you made them feel good about their content and their articles, they'll be more likely to want to help you out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to sell briefly what it is that you have and why it would be a good fit. I kind of tr try and mention here at this point what is in the link that I'm going to be sharing uh, before they get into it because they may not click that link or they may be hesitant to click that link. So I need to kind of preface, hey, I have this great article that would be a good fit for your next link roundup. Uh, it's about this. And so showing that this content that I have is relevant to their link roundups will make them more likely to click that link. Because let's keep in mind, this is an unsolicited email. They may be hesitant to click a link to a random website that could be a virus. Um, and so after you know this, they're going to need a reason to want to help you out. And they're not going to just click your link if they have a gut feeling that you're wasting their time. So uh, be as detailed as you can, you know, just as briefly as you can uh, about why your content is relevant to their audience and to their roundup. Uh, and at the end, I'll say, you know, um, I'm happy to share your roundup with my audience and it's showing that I'm willing to help them out too. And so they'll, they should appreciate that. Um, and then at the very end, you know, thank you for your consideration. Now let's talk about all the notes that I'm trying to hit in my email, you know, one by one. Well, the first thing I'm trying to do is demonstrate as quickly as I can that I am human. You know, show that you are not a robot or a spammer, uh, because if they detect a hint of that, they won't respond. Your email has to be personalized to each recipient. Uh, otherwise, it'll if it comes off fake, then they're just going to send it to spam or trash, and you're not going to get your your backlink. Uh, next. Flattery is, a, flattery is a really good thing here. Show that you know and like their content. Uh, you know, flattery will make them remember how you made them feel and they'll want to help you out. Uh, next, show that you're not wasting their time. You know, you have value to provide and are worth the interruption uh, to their inbox. And last, your article is a good fit. You know, have the show and the ask. Please link to my article. Uh, but also my article is a good fit for you. So this makes sense for you. And that's kind of my process and my approach with emails in this example for a link round of outreach, but really for all types of email outreach for link building for each of these, whether we're doing uh, link roundups or the skyscraper technique, every single email that we're sending, we want to demonstrate in the email that I'm human that I appreciate you taking the time, that uh, I'm here to provide value for you, and that we're a good fit, and I'm not wasting your time. And all of those kind of components we want to be able to cover in our outreach emails. And that's my process with the initial outreach emails. But you might be wondering, well, what do we do with our follow-up emails? And if you've been checking out these other videos in this series on link building, you'll know that having a follow-up email is important because not everyone that you reach out to will read and respond to your first outreach attempt. Having a follow-up and a second follow-up as a backup are going to be important. And the more follow-up you have, the increased likelihood that you get your emails read and get a response. 
And in another video, we're going to actually talk about a follow-up with social media and LinkedIn in particular. Um, but for now, I just want to stick to email follow-ups. Uh, my follow-up email template is pretty simple. I reply to the previous email that I had sent so that they see the chain and it kind of, and I say kind of simply, Hey, have you had a chance to look at my last email? Uh, I don't want to be too verbose and I want to say too much here because, you know, if my first email outreach didn't work, I don't know that that same kind of tactic is going to work again because they may have glanced over if they even opened my first email, they may have seen uh, a bunch of paragraphs of text and what looked like an outreach attempt related to uh, getting a backlink. And they may have thought, oh, no, I don't even deal with this. So I take this approach of just saying, hey, just wanted to see if you had a chance to look at my last email and what you thought. And this, when they see this, if they open this email, um, it kind of comes off like, hey, I emailed you and didn't hear back. How, how rude. And it makes the recipient feel like, oh man, I feel like a jerk. I can't believe that I forgot to check that out. Let me do that now. And then let me scroll down in this email and see what was in that first email. And from personal experience, kind of with a more brief follow-up email, I've had much more success as opposed to having a more lengthy follow-up email that regurgitates basically the same contents of the first email. And I've seen that. I've seen people with a follow-up email try and basically say, like, maybe even repeat word for word the same thing that was in the first email. But if the first one didn't work, doing that same tactic again, I don't think is going to work. But having the follow-up be very brief, especially if you've already emailed them, you're going to increase the likelihood that you get to their inbox and they may may see it and may open it and be more likely to be like, oh, wow, we already kind of have a conversation going, but I've ignored them. Let me check out what this was and see if I need to respond. And it makes it more likely that you do actually get a response. And follow-up emails are important because uh, in my experience, most recipients will not respond to your initial email and follow up gets you another crack at that recipient. And more than one follow up is good. Too many follow ups is bad. Um, in general, my strategy, I want to do two follow ups that are spread over a week. Uh, so if I send out my first email, let's say uh, on a Monday, I'm going to send uh, my first follow up email on a Wednesday, two days after the first email, and I didn't get a response. And then if I don't get a response to that, I'm going to send another follow-up email on Friday, two days later. And so that's kind of the follow-up strategy that I have. So quickly recapping everything that we've talked about here. First, use our templates. Go to postaga.com slash DL for inspiration. Um, to basically, I don't want you to reinvent the wheel, start from our templates and crafting your outreach emails to uh, the people that you want to get a link from. And we have templates for everything from uh, link roundup outreach to skyscraper technique and related content outreach, uh, everything that we're talking about, these other outreach method types uh, in these other videos that we have in this series. So use our templates, uh, come up with a good, interesting subject line, uh, try out different ones. Remember, try out urgency, curiosity, um, something that can increase the likelihood that someone actually checks out your email because the subject line is important. If you don't have an interesting subject, your email doesn't get opened, and then all your efforts are for naught. Uh, and with your emails and the subject lines, test, test, test. Try out different subject lines, try out different email body texts. And lastly, good follow-up is key. Um, don't just send one email, have a backup, have a follow-up that's very simple, and then another follow-up to fall back on if the recipient doesn't respond to those first two emails. And that is a recap of everything you need to know about drafting emails related to a link building outreach campaign. And if you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, check out our other videos in this series on link building techniques and outreach. Uh, we have a lot of videos on every aspect of link building and outreach campaigns, everything from uh, in-depth tutorial on the skyscraper technique 
to link roundup outreach to crafting the perfect blog post for your link building outreach campaigns. Um, and beyond that, please check out our websites at postdaga.com and offsprout.com.